Yesterday I went to donate plasma and you know when I was donating plasma, you know usually there's a little small talk with the nurse that's assisting the situation. And so she asked me what I was gonna do after my plasma donation. So I explained a couple things I was gonna do. I was gonna meet with uh, somebody. And then she asked me if, uh, if I was retired. Now, when, when I explained what I was gonna do, I didn't say I was gonna go lawn bowling. I, I didn't say I was, you know, gonna play that pickleball or anything like that. Anything that might sort of make her think that I was retired, but she asked me if I was retired. Now, of course, I could see that as a compliment that, you know, I've worked so hard that I can retire early, but nonetheless, or is she thinking that I'm a lot older than I am? it's a little bit of an assault on my ego. But of course, you know, even in those moments, we have to be people of forgiveness. Or in other words, we just have to let it go. You know, in the first reading, you know, it really emphasizes that if we expect God to forgive us, then we have to forgive other people. Or if we expect good graces from God, then we have to forgive other people. I mean, it doesn't make sense for us to have a vengeful heart towards somebody and yet expect good things from God. It's very contradictory. And so we have to have this unity. You know, our relationship with God has to encourage our relationship with others. Now, in the second reading, the letter to the Romans, you know, Christ is forever present. You know, and so Christ is, is, is present for us to draw the gift of forgiveness from. You know, and really what, you know, if we think of the Lord's Prayer, forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. What we recognize is that God is the source of forgiveness. And so whether I need to receive forgiveness or I need to allow forgiveness to flow through me, towards another person, it's God who is the source of forgiveness. And so God being ever present or Christ being ever present, present is able at any point in time to, for us to reach out and to receive this gift of forgiveness. Now in a gospel reading, you know, Peter, Peter at least knows the importance of forgiveness. You know, he says, how many times do we have to forgive? He recognizes a certain amount of times that we have to forgive. Now, when he gives the number seven, this actually is, is quite a large number at this point in time. But if we think about it, you know, how many times do married couples have to forgive? And, and when Peter says seven, it's not just one day. This is a lifetime. So, I'm, I mean, I'm pretty sure that married couples, I mean, they can correct me if I'm wrong, but have to forgive more than seven times in a lifetime. So Jesus gives a number, but the number is to really express that there is no limit to forgiveness. I mean, we have to continuously forgive and forgive. But it's really so that we don't carry that person around on our backs, like they're in our in a backpack that we're carrying around. And, and how important that is, but also because we want to receive the gift of peace that only God can give. And so one of the most inspiring things are those people who forgive. And they forgive truly from the depths of their hearts where God dwells and what a blessing that is. And you know, there's two gifts that we can always be assured of that flows from the death and resurrection of Jesus, and that is love and forgiveness. And so what a gift it is to come to the table of plenty to receive Jesus Christ so that we can be strengthened to be people of love, to be people of forgiveness.